What's up, fellas? What we're looking at right here is a Pulse Jet engine, and these things are extremely tough to light. Sometimes you can't get them to light at all, and I have discovered the key to easy ignition. Why are some hard to light and others just light right up? That was the question I had to answer today because I have two of these for sale. They've already been bought. And I can't get the freaking things to light. So I'm like freaking out today. One of the toughest days I've had to endure for a long time, for many years. So today was just one of those days where I was in an absolute war with the equipment. I couldn't get this thing to work for nothing. And I was really getting nervous and freaked out because as I said, I've already sold two of these. One of them is even more expensive than this one. It has a thermal cracker on the back of it. And I'm just freaking out. I've, I've had the same problem on an asphalt lance that I sold about a month ago. It took about 18 tries Very to get the to thing go. lit. Go. Well, in this video, I do discover the key ingredient to a successful, simple ignition on a Pulse Jet engine. And um, pretty glad that I did because I sell a lot of these and I can't be putting this torture on my customers. I have to know exactly why this thing is hard to light and I got to make it to where it's simple to light. So just for a review, this is what an asphalt heat lance is. This is a tool used by parking lot companies and people who do repair jobs on asphalt and stuff like that. You may have a big crack in your parking lot and if there's grass growing up through the cracks or it's full of water and you're there to seal it this thing will vaporize all the water out of the hole blow all the grass and dirt out of the cracks and it can even ablate the surface and rip up old chunks of asphalt you see how quickly there that it can melt this asphalt it will ablate all of that stuff away pretty fast so you got a lot of heat and a lot of air pressure and you don't need a five thousand dollar air compressor to do it they make it Similar piece of equipment that requires a trailer hitch type massive air compressor to run. This does not. Last time I had a completely different valve, and I got a feeling that's affecting the operation of this. Okay, so I changed the valve and tried it a bunch of times. I spared you guys that boring footage. I'm now busting out an actual machined pulse jet engine. It was sent to me by a company to try out and do a video of and they have this igniter box with it so we're going to try the fire to spark plug up on this thing and see how that goes and it did not work at all it's a very weak spark i have changed the valve up the whole time what the problem is is our air to fuel ratio is just wrong the difficulty lies in the fact that the combustion range for propane and air is 2.15% to 9.6% propane. So if your propane air to fuel ratio is outside of that range, it won't combust. That's a very narrow band of gas composition. So I kind of went into this thinking that in a previous test, I found that crimping off the spuds, giving a higher velocity kind of solved the problem but I try all this other stuff first because having the larger spuds does allow a higher power piece of equipment so here I try another transformer that's got a little bit more power to it and nothing no matter what I do I just can't get this thing to light I did get it to light one time off camera I eventually turned the camera off because I was wasting so much footage it was just a waste of my my data you see there how we have that big yellow flame coming out of this thing? That's a dead giveaway that our air to fuel ratio is deficient. We have way too much fuel. We are above 9.6% propane in that case. And it's just not going to burn inside of there. The only way we're going to get internal combustion is to bring it down into that 9% range. And um, that's what it's going to take. I end up moving the spuds back to try and get a little bit more air pulled in there through the air horns because those air horns are basically ejector pumps that pump air by using the velocity of the propane. So the more propane velocity that you have, the more air 
those ejector pumps will pull into the combustion zone. And in this case, I'm just using a 1 8 inch piece of tube that's nominal size, 1 8 inch stainless steel tube. So the inner orifice is about three to four millimeters, maybe about three millimeters. So this thing is just eating me alive. Like I'm missing dinner, I'm getting all these phone calls. I got customers calling me, people calling me. I'm not having a good day today at all. It, it took me about six hours of me jacking around with this thing. You can see here, now I'm trying to inject compressed air to force the air to fuel ratio to change, but I'm just not getting it dialed in right. Nothing I do works. I've seen people in older videos years ago of them using an air compressor to assist in the ignition process of one of these units. And I'm just at a loss here. I am getting destroyed, you guys. This thing is killing me. I miss dinner. It's getting late in the evening. And nothing I do will work. Finally, I eventually get in there and change the orifice diameter of the spuds, the propane spuds. And the way I do that is just crimp it down with a okay, pair of pliers. Okay, so I have decreased the spud diameter. That's going to give us a higher velocity jet of propane, which is going to pump more air. It's acting air deficient. We see that. It's not letting me get enough in there for the initial ignition. I had the thing running, but I turned the camera off because it was just taking too long. So I know the design where it's just struggling to ignite. It's really not liking this. I have prayed for wisdom. I don't want to put any pressure on these if they're not here. So maybe I shouldn't have said that. I have faith. I think this is going to work. Okay, this is the finale. We're going to dinner if this works. We didn't need no stinking air hose or nothing, dude. It was just beautiful. Now that's what I'm talking about. I, I knew that the fuel to air ratio was lacking. See now we have that big blue flame coming out the front now? Like this. Look at that. See how there's no yellow on that? Whoa. We are so going to dinner. This this just freaking saved my life. You guys are wondering why I'm so worried. Not only did I already sell this thing. But I've got a couple more going out. So cracking this nut was, I don't even want to say what it was again, because China watches my videos, and they've been trying to steal my stuff. I almost want to do it again, but when I was too loud, dude, it's like 7.45 in the evening, I'm pissing off all the neighbors. I have been jacking with this thing for hours. We're done, son. So yeah, China is constantly trying to steal my intellectual property. You can see here, um, this guy's hitting me up with, the, with all kinds of questions, wanting to figure out how to build this thing. And it's just, it gets old. I don't even want China watching my stuff, dude. Um, I just don't, I don't like it. This guy's here trying to find ideas of what they can sell on TeamU. Or Alibaba, and they've already stole 
intellectual property from me before and they tried to get my ebay shut down on top of it so i'm not a fan of china 